Hey guys, so you saw earlier, I, I guess you could call it part one. Um, I changed all the capacitors on my uh, circuit card here. Well, the PSU power supply card, you can call it whatever you want. So, this is Marty on the inside. And something to point out right away with Marty, um, this is a micro switch. And when it's held down, uh, trying to get it on. There you go. You can see me pushing it down with my finger, right? I know it's really tiny. So we're going to turn Marty on, and I'm not going to hold it. I'm going to show you what happens. So you get the boot screen, and then all the stars are going to start coming, right? So the next issue you're going to see, its it looks blue, but I promise it's actually a really dark blue. It's just the settings on my camera, that's all. I'll change it later on my phone. Sorry. So anyway, I'm going to hold that switch. So this is what it was doing before. It tries to read, and then it quits, even though I'm still holding the switch. And I don't even have an access light, so the light's not even doing anything. Okay, again. It's nothing. So, re replacing all the components in my PSU didn't, uh, well, capacitors. Didn't fix the disk drive issue. I've heard that fixes the issue sometimes. Now, yes. I do have the optical drive emulator, but I would still really, 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 sorry. I would still really, really, really prefer to save the disk drive. I know somebody could still use a disk drive that wants to run their disks instead of using SD cards. So the next thing we'll do is we'll try replacing the capacitors on this to see if we can bring this back to life. I'm, I'm hoping we can. Uh, but we'll see. All right, so to get our disk drive out without breaking anything, uh, I'll show you how. Uh, it is it is honestly simple, but uh, I mean, I'm still going to go through it. I mean, you know, these are super, super old sensitive systems. Don't want to bust them up. So you got a grounding cable, right? Well, I believe it's grounding cable. So don't lose the screw. Very important. I'm actually, like, I'm literally trying to keep the screw. So I've seen these yellow cables before. Um, I think I worked on a Neo Geo CD recently that had the same type of yellow cable. But it was detachable in one point, but this is not detachable, so. Um, also, um, I don't think I cleaned the laser very well. Uh, I've cleaned it before, uh, but we're still going to clean the laser once I'm done recapping this whole thing. So let's see. Okay. Uh, usually there's um, keep this bolt, keep this on. Uh, I always, I always uh, undo this right. Oh, dang it! Camera didn't get it. All right. I always unscrew this. Uh, I don't just yank this out with this stayed in. I always unscrew it. Then because these cables, uh, I'm 29 years old and this thing's 28 years old, so uh, I've got a lot of wear and tear, and I know this thing is wear and tear, even though it looks super nice. This is well taken care of. So, hold it from here. Bam. Uh, you don't yank up. You don't. You have to just yank straight back as close to the source as possible, like that. I think I had it like this. Uh, don't yank it from here. You're, you're literally just going to tear shit up that way. So, this is uh, our optical drive for Marty. So, there's a few ways we can go about this. Uh, first thing you need to do, uh, uh, grab the, turn on all the equipment. Uh, I got a capacitor kit, console five. So what we can do is we can desolder all the capacitors. Um, I'm very curious why this only moves for a couple seconds and then it just cues out and dies. Um, and like I said, I have never worked on this before, so everything you're going to see me do on this is just me on the fly. 
So, I already see one thing I'm gonna do. So I'm putting this down to protect the lens. Uh, these are screwed, little tiny baby screws. So now I need to go get a screwdriver for the baby screw, little screws, whatever you want to call them. I kind of grab my food bar and say, no. So, there's three screws and they're literally labeled with little screws right here on the PCB board. As you see, there's a screw here. Can't see that well. So, right here, the screw. Here there's a screw, right there, there's a screw. Okay, so this optical block should be able to be pulled up at this point. Okay, it can't be pulled up. So, <laughs> this needs to come off anyway, don't get it twisted. Uh, there's capacitors hiding underneath that I need to service, but uh, this is soldered in right here. This is zoomed, uh, soldered in right here, so uh, this definitely needs to be desoldered for this to be yanked off and taken apart. So I got my ZD915. Turn to line this up so you see it. Simple. There is nothing keeping it shouldn't be anything. Oh nope, there's another point. I am so sorry. We got one right here too. Still not all that solder, so there's not a lot left on there. So I'm gonna do that thing where you add solder to remove solder. I don't know if you've heard that one before. The solder's on there really hard. sense mm. all right so you see I'm pushing it just a, just a little hair and I'm not putting it on that long to yank that out so that should be This just all right. It looks like these two points are for the fucking motor. Um, mm. 
I literally just felt it in my hand. All right. So there's no videos on the internet showing this. So now you're seeing it. So we're... Marty's no longer held on here. Right. Yep. Okay. Careful. Next thing you want to do, we got this ribbon cable. Let's see. How do we yank this out? Do we just yank it? not coming out with a tug okay so there's two locks on the side there's one on each side so we're gonna go here so saw me pull that down here here we go you should just pull out like super easy. So this is it. So this is the Marty PCB. Uh, I don't know why this is here. It's probably the form factor of this uh, this driving laser. So this laser block. Uh, pretty curious about it. Um, if it turns out this whole thing's toast, um, I look into getting something else, but I'm pretty damn sure it's just these capacitors, obviously. So, when I service this, usually I like to look at the uh, console 5 list for capacitors because one, it's where I got my shit from, and two, um, Luke runs a good website. Um, I like Luke a lot. Um, and I, you know, I buy his shit from there. Uh, he's a cool dude. Uh, this is if you're American specifically. Uh, I don't know about anywhere else that sell. Like, you, I guess you can, you'll have to. You can use his lists and then go to like Mauser and stuff uh, for all your other shit. So I'm just looking at the capacitor list, and it's all the same. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine, ten. Huh. There's stuff underneath this. You know how I can tell there's stuff underneath it? There's a bunch of fucking soldering right here. So, this will come up. I mean, if I break it, I break it. Because I've never worked on this before. But I'm pretty fucking sure there's stuff. Wait. You see, there's a bunch of soldering and components here. So, I know something's under here. Exacto knife to get under it. But I don't want to be near any traces for this. Oh, there we go. There we go. And I, like I said, I just wanted to use the Exacto knife to get under. Get them under. I'd like to try to use one of these stupid cell phone repair tools. So the reason I'm curious about this, uh, once again, there's a shitload of soldering, but uh, my capacitor list says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it says there's ten capacitors. Well, I mean, there's ten on the board visible, but uh, my list says there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's like way more, at least four or five more. So. Oh, yep, I was totally right. So, food for thought, all under here. Uh, don't be fooled by this. Uh, I hope to God I didn't rip some shit up pulling this up. Did I fuck up any traces? So, here's why I don't like this glue adhesion shit. Is, uh, look at that. So what I'm worried about now and the effort to serve this uh, that have ripped any traces up. But I mean, then again, this disk drive could already be toast. But so far, uh, this isn't bad. Uh, didn't really fuck anything up. Which is a good thing. So, I'm just going to go through the uh, 
be soldiering. Uh, I don't, I'll just leave it running. I'll just leave the camera running. Fuck it. We got a ton more to do. Now another thing, um, I'll just talk while I work. Uh, this is going to be kind of a long video trying to save the disk drive. Is uh, you can actually when you uh, change these out. Uh, there's also test points on this board that I've noticed so far, literally labeled like PP1 and stuff like that. Um, I don't know of any English documentation that people have to maintain these things. Uh, people in Japan don't really, I mean, if it's in English, if it's in English somewhere, you know, nobody else knows about it, but all the tech enthusiasts that really like this type of stuff, uh, we keep having to like go through trial and error and solving shit on our own. And all it does is take one Japanese person to probably say, hey, this solution exists, or hey, this solution doesn't exist. And you guys need to get to work and help us out with that. So, the good news is, actually, a lot of these just come up pretty damn easy. Yeah, I would think for an old, old console like this, for the solder, I've heard, uh, on oh, Marty's, you gotta turn your gun or your heat gun and your soldering gun ends up pretty damn high. Uh, but so far, this is totally working. These are, uh, this is a laser potentiometer right there. Uh, the optical block should also have one or two. Okay, there's one. There's uh, one uh, laser under here, well, potentiometer under here. And I'm telling you guys, it is super, 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 super tiny. Super tiny. And if your laser's dying, like 911 status, you can attempt to uh, adjust that potentiometer to try to revive it. I wouldn't adjust the one on the board as much. I would adjust the one on the actual laser. Uh, the ones on the board, those are calibrated for the factory. So don't touch this one. Um, I would be touching, once again, little laser. If you want to try to get more life out of this, which I'm probably going to have to attempt it, I just have a feeling. There's a tiny potentiometer. Oh, my fingers in the way. Right here. 
that's what you want to adjust. But when I say you adjust it, you want to turn it like barely. I'm talking like one sixteenth of an inch turning. I'm gonna get some alcohol. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, all that glue and shit over there. Uh, I'd like to just, just clean off the top a little bit instead of just letting it look like shit and just sit there. Uh, if this comes, if this doesn't come off easy, I'm just gonna ignore it. It's like I said, this disk drive might be, might go anyway. Uh, I don't want it to, but I'm trying to save it. Uh, but this will be part of servicing an FM Towns Marty. Is uh, you got to do this more or less. Uh, other things that I'm looking at that could totally go wrong. Um, I don't know if these are proprietary chips. Uh, I, I guess some of these fucking chips can fail, but if anything, it's going to be the laser. Um, there's no A6. Yeah, these are just these are just all chips. I mean, I'm just getting all these holes. All right, so that's pretty gross. Um, I got my little bag. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do, uh, I gotta find which capacitor is going which hole. So look on my list. Uh, here we go. Uh, one more thing I kind of didn't think about. Uh, now I'm just remembering. Uh, the laser block. Uh, it will have a different time. Or different time. Uh, it will treat burned media differently than um, authentically pressed media. Unfortunately, um, actually, I do own an FM, I do own some FM Town software. Uh, when I bought my broken tower, um, it came with a disc, so I can try throwing it in just to see if it's recognized. So first, it, uh, first capacitor is a hundred microfarad. Boy, these are all different values, so this is going to be annoying. Um, one hundred microfarad, six point three volts. Yeah, these are all different values. Just double checking. Mm. Hold on. All right, so added all the capacitors. Um, they're all in, and I did the same method I do last time where I stick them through and all the leads are poking. Um, so one thing to note, um, there's a lot of them that follow one value that came with the kit, and that is 100 microfarad, 16 volts. Um, you get four tall ones with the console 5 kit, and you get a ton of the shorter ones. 
the tall ones I placed here, here, and then here. Now, you're going to ask me, you know, why did you do that? So, here was that piece we had. Oh, there's also one here. There's a short one. But these are the tall ones. Here's why. And I bet if I put that tall one over here, this wouldn't be able to go over. Or it'd be pretty damn close. Um, and I know, I don't know why this is here, because optical block goes here. And I can slide over that. So that's why you want to do it that way. Um, if I do, I'm not, when I reassemble this for testing, I'm just going to place it here haphazardly. I don't really care. Um, I will end up using Kapton tape to hold it down, which is totally safe, non-conductive, uh, non-heat transferable. Um, I'll totally use Kapton tape to hold it down. But in the meantime, uh, we got to get these capacitors soldered on. So... Let's start out here. Be honest, this older stuff I'm uh, a little hesitant on applying a lot of heat. I am gonna get good joints on these, I do assure you, but I'm just the heat is what I'm hesitant on. Sometimes with these older electronics, you gotta use a ton of heat or you gotta uh, wait 100 minutes, 150 minutes, whatever you want to call it, to heat stuff up. Sometimes you put a bunch, sometimes you don't. Uh, I'm personally pretty hesitant on these. If it's not adhering, just add more liquid flux. No clean flux. I like to use no clean, but I still clean. Hmm. I don't like that joint very much. Glad I don't have the chisel tip on this one. Way. There we go. 
C4 have a capacitor? Did I miss one? Wow, C4 had a capacitor and I totally missed it. That, uh, I'm going to be real, that does not happen very much. I have to desolder one of these because uh, mainboard actually uses only 16 volt capacitors, so I kind of fucked up here. Uh, well, not I mean not hardcore fucked up or anything, but I had to take C7 off. Sorry, it's not the Pulled that out safely, didn't break it. That was that brand new one uh, that I placed by mistake uh, in the incorrect spot. It should be... Here, I'll explain why. So, yeah, we missed C7. Well, this is the one we just yanked out. C7, 100 microfarad, 6.3. This is 10 volts. 6.3, well, this is rated for 6.3, but you can use a higher voltage one. However... All of the 100 microfarad 16 volt ones I have, this giant strip of them, uh, the internals, all the internals use is that. Uh, by internals, I mean main motherboard, and uh, I will be recapping that board. Um, so I'm a little worried, uh, I was a little worried at first, but uh, I caught it. Uh, so C4 is 100 micro, that's this last one, 100 microfarads, 10 volts. That's what it's rated at. And that is precisely what I have here. So my capacitor count will be even. Even, even, even. Oh, where was that last one? I should have just clipped these. It would have been a little bit easier. all these legs.
right, uh, this is the only one I was a little weird about, was uh, this blue capacitor. Um, didn't really have a uh, stripe going down it like, at all, actually. Uh, it'll buff out, though. So, uh, I'm just going to haphazardly put this here. Oh, not too haphazardly. So the optical block, we're going to pull this connector out. Pull this connector out as much as possible, right? So we pulled it out. As much as we can go. So this, this gets inserted with contacts contacts facing up. It's going to be very awkward to do. Uh, I believe in you. You can do it. Like I said, extremely awkward. This was not built. This was not really built with maintenance in mind, if you could tell. So you just saw how I did it. I had to uh, hold it with my right hand and I had to bring this in on each side with both my fingers. This was not built intelligently. Okay. So that's back and you want to line this back up with that stuff but first I'm gonna put this back it appears this goes underneath the ribbon cable yep So we should have points here, here, and there should be uh, near the, yeah, right there. So one on this one is a positive and one is a negative so it's important you don't bridge these don't bridge these when you're soldering them just make sure they do have good adhesion but like I said split just like that not don't don't fucking have them bridged so by bridged this is what bridged is bridged is when I can't even do it but you see how the solder's touching? Yeah, that's bridge. So don't do that. Uh, like when they're crossed together, don't do that. Um, last piece. Right there. All right. This has been rebuilt and serviced. Uh, almost. Uh, that was isopropyl alcohol, if you couldn't guess. Uh, we got a toothbrush. We got a toothbrush. I 
mean, I just went everywhere, but you really want to hit those uh, joints you just did. Uh, so, next thing. Yeah, I'm going to put all these dead capacitors. Well, not dead, but ganked out. Uh, let's hope we can revive the disk drive. If we can't revive the disk drive, uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, the only other thing I could really think of at this point uh, would be changing all the capacitors on the main board. Well, I'm going to change them on the main board anyway. But... This is like the only other thing I can think of. So. All right, so. Here's Marty. So we are gonna put this drive back. Just like that. Uh, this connector goes right back in. And uh, this, let me get screwed there. Uh, so notice I didn't screw the optical drive back in. Uh, this is just in case I have to uh, disassemble this again and then maybe troubleshoot it further. But uh, the optical block is not screwed back in. Just want to point that out. Because I already know uh, someone that's been paying attention is going to say, why isn't it screwed in? Well, that's why. I know. Okay, so I throw our RCA cables back in. So, the next thing I'll do, uh, let me go get my uh, press disc. Um, I don't know what this is. This looks like a operating system software. If I had to speculate. Uh, I also have a uh, burned CD somewhere. God damn it, I just had it. Uh, I had a burned disc for... Uh, oh, here it is. A uh, burned disc for Splatterhouse. So, that's what we're going to try out today. Splatterhouse. So, I'm going to see if I can get it on. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, and I know this copy of Splatterhouse works with my uh, optical drive emulator. I know it does. Uh, I threw Doc Brown in just to... Oh, look, my ODE works. Okay, yank it out, because I'd still like to revive this. So, first thing I'm going to do... That, I'm going to hold that, disc sw that lid switch. Oh, we might need a power cable. On hmm. It's not even trying. didn't even attempt to read it. Interesting. I know I didn't put these in incorrectly. It's all in the right way. Now I know it might sound like I'm scratching it. Uh, I'm not. I promise I'm not. This is not a scratch. You first start lightly, and then if that doesn't do it, then you just go to town like I just did.
plot could be done. See the blocks moving. See a tiny bit of moving right here. I mean, it's moving. Only other thing I can think of is that's not making full contact, which that could be a thing. I'll figure it out. So I've totally concluded uh, this is toast um, without the butter. Uh, it's totally done. Unfortunately, um, I've tried reseating the ribbon cable, as you see, and, it, and it's totally seated in there. Um, it's been recapped, like you've done, like everything right. The only other thing I could think of is adjusting the potentiometer in there. Um, and I could do that. Uh, I'm not sure, like I said, there's no fucking documentation on this thing telling you resistor value, or not resistor, uh, resistance value for the potentiometer that's supposed to be on there for the laser um, but ultimately even if I adjusted it you won't get a lot of life out of this you really won't so unfortunately that's this video is not really a repair it's more of if you get one of these with a working disk drive um, how to service it uh, I think that's a good way to look at this because how to disassemble it safely um, so I'm going to put the screws back in and this is just going to go on the, uh, a drawer full of, you know, CD drives from like Sega Saturns and stuff. Um, we do have this and that's pretty cool and I like this one a lot and this is what we're going to use, uh, in the next part. Uh, it'll be later, but, um, got that. I'm really thankful for this. So I know my fingerprints are everywhere. It looks like poop. I know. Um, but the next thing I got to do, uh, and I know this works, is uh, recap the motherboard. So that'll be the next part, actually.